The major difference between the astrology of 2020 and 2021 is that in 2020 we had really difficult alignments all compiled on top of each other in the same signs. Whereas 2021 is moving more towards normal astrology that we're used to, where there's different alignments of varying difficulty or ease spread out amidst the sky. And in this video, we're going to see what some of those more varied themes are. If you're excited to dive into the astrology, the tarot, and the oracle deck cards for the year ahead 2021, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. This video is brought to you by my very own Astrology Academy course. This course is a comprehensive deep dive into the foundations of Western astrology. This includes history, philosophy, technical concepts, counseling considerations, and a step-by-step -step guide to reading a chart. I also have my Manifestation Mysteries of the Moon course out all on the moon, using it for manifestation, using it for self-care, and I would love to have you enter that course as well if the moon specifically interests you. So check those out below along with my free webinars on learning astrology and also on meeting the moon if you're new to the moon. Hi there, I'm Marin. I am an astrologer, author, and philosophy student. I combine traditional Hellenistic astrological techniques with modern psychological counseling dynamics in order to provide grounded spiritual guidance with my astrology. This is following. <laughs> so first in this video we're going to run through the major planetary alignments coloring the year. The slower planetary conjunctions and other aspects that reflect what the larger themes of the year are. Then we are going to dive into what the transits are, the retrogrades, some of the retrogrades of the year. Then we are going to dive into the eclipses for the year. So first start out with the major archetypal themes, then when we are going through some weird pacing through the eclipses, which are the bullseye focal points. So we start the year off with a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius. This went exact at the end of 2020, but this is still a major transit coloring the beginning of 2021 throughout the year. This is the meeting of of Jupiter, growth, and Saturn limitation. And I have a full video on the Great Conjunction as it's called down below, but this is really pivotal because Jupiter and Saturn, the two furthest visible planets, they meet every 20 years to define a new cycle of reality, um, but every 200 years they switch elements. So they had been in Earth signs for the past 200 years, and now they're moving into air signs for the next 200, so it's known as the Great Mutation. So we really are stepping up to an age of air signs. Um, I'm phrasing it as there will no longer be wars on land, but there will be wars online. We're moving from a tyranny of the material to a tyranny of the intellectual. So it's not a love and light freedom fest, it's more of now we are working really in the realm of ideas and that is the new precedent, the new normal for the next few hundred years, so get used to it. Early on in the year as well, we will have Mars moving into Taurus after spending six months in Aries during 2020. So early 2021 we have Mars moving into Taurus and it will immediately square Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius. And Jupiter and Saturn will have the upper hand. They come before Taurus in the zodiacal wheel. So especially around the 11th of January, the early part of the year, we're in this tension between wanting to act in a way that's comfortable Taurus, act in a way with our resources that feels normal, whereas this new age of innovation is like, we're going to push you. We're going to make sure that this is a time for you to grow up. I think that's really clear in the beginning of the year is that the acceleration that we thought happened during 2020 does not even compare to the beginning of the acceleration into online and intellectual focus in early 2021. So also, Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius will be squaring Uranus in Taurus. And this is an outer planet theme, especially with Saturn square Uranus, of Saturn limitation. Uh, boundaries, the past, what we're used to defining our reality in. Squaring Uranus, the Promethean force of liberation and innovation. And this is again, this, this is the most major outer planetary theme of this year, is Saturn square Uranus and this dance they're going to have for the next year of friction between staying the same and defending the ideas that we're used to holding and innovating in a way that changes the ground beneath us. That Saturn in Aquarius is the structure of the the thoughts, the structure of what community means when it comes together and the group think that can take place. Squaring Uranus and Taurus, which is the innovation of our relationship to Earth, um, fingers crossed, and animal agriculture in the next, the next few years. 
um, and Saturn square Uranus is how does structure compare to innovation? How does safety compare to bursting forward with the new? What does it look like to have the past and what we're comfortable with and what we know we need to change in our habits look like? What does that nailing down result really look like? That's the tension for this year. There are three times this year where this will be exact. The first is February 17th. The second is June 14th. Saturn will be retrograde then, so I see the summer. The summer is more difficult. Um, I see June 14th as important with Saturn retrograde, June as a reflection of these steps, and also December 24th. So um, around Christmas time, we get another nailing of this. So that Saturn square Uranus, um, I can't really overstate how that is coloring the entire year of Saturn strong and Aquarius in its home sign, overcoming Uranus and Taurus, and being like, watch watch what happens when we try to defend what we know but we know we have to change in order to literally not end our species on earth some major planetary retrogrades and transits this year so we will have three mercury retrogrades i have a mercury retrograde survival guide video if you want to reference that because we have a mercury retrograde very early on this year january 30th to february 19th we have a mercury retrograde in aquarius so fixed signs aquarius watch out for that one not a big deal um, but you know keep an eye out we have a second one, May 29th to June 22nd in Gemini, so mutable signs and Gemini, watch out for that one. We then have our third and final Mercury retrograde of this entire year on September 27th to October 18th in Libra. Uh, cardinal signs and Libras, watch out for that one. Mercury retrogrades this year are interesting because they are all in air signs. Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Another emphasis on air signs. Air signs, and in particular Aquarius, are the focal point for this year. Um, air signs fix signs when they overlap. Aquarius, you're, the spotlight's on you. It's off of it's off of the Capricorn placement and it's placed on you. But um, we do have a Venus retrograde, actually late in the year. So December 19th to January 29th of 2022, we have a Venus retrograde in Capricorn. And I don't really have my eye on this a ton, but it is interesting that after the Capricorn battlefield of the past three years, we're going to have a little Venus retrograde there. So that might mean that some of the steps and growth that we've made are going to be tested with what that means for our values at the end of the year. So expect a little refresher lesson on the past three years with the Venus retrograde the end of 2021. Jupiter. Jupiter will be in Aquarius for the entirety of 2021. So that's the growth and expansion of ideas of the seriousness of the architecture of our collective noosphere, the um, I, way that we think as a collective consciousness. And that it's in the same sign as Saturn, so there is that seriousness that um, not really a free-for-all love fest, but rather a grounding of our ideas into the practical. And Jupiter will be retrograde from June 20th to October 18th. So June 20th to October 18th, Jupiter will be retrograde in Aquarius. What's interesting is that kind of overlapping with that, May 13th, this is big, May 13th to July 28th, Jupiter will actually be in Pisces. So May 13th to July 28th, Jupiter will be in its home sign of Pisces. It will have rushed forward, moved into Pisces for a little like, hey Pisces, before I go back to Aquarius. It will be in its home sign of Pisces for May 13th to July 28th, especially in the early part of this when Jupiter is not retrograde. So May 13th to June 20th, that is going to be all things considered, other factors to the best part of 2021, May 13th to June 20th. If there's something you need to do, especially if you're in one of the signs really activated this year, like Aquarius or air signs, Gemini as well, you want to take advantage of this. Um, definitely want to take advantage, everyone, of the May 13th to June 20th period of this year because Jupiter will be direct and it will be in Pisces, its home sign for a preview of 2022. So back into the rest of the year, Jupiter will then be back in Aquarius until December 28th when Jupiter moves into Pisces. Saturn will be in Aquarius the whole year. Saturn's going to spend three years in Aquarius. Limitation, challenge, maturity in the Aquarius part of your chart and as a collective in the group think of what happens when we combine our ideas on an intellectual level because of the online community. Growing up, 
making online, making virtual, making really a reality out of this lifestyle now. Um, I have a full video on Saturn in Aquarius for what we can expect, but I also see an increase in, you know, the surveillance and the limitation of what we can do online. Would not be surprised if um, social media, I actually guarantee social media will be regulated. I also guarantee that the wars between countries will mostly transfer online, not that they're not already doing that and that you couldn't consider us already being in some of those, but that really, really like voter infiltration, things like that, really picking up for the next few years as the new, the new basis. Uranus will still be in Taurus. Uranus is in Taurus 2018 to 2025, so we're approaching midway of the seven-year transit, but that's the revolutionizing, the Promethean force of our relationship to fixed Earth, to the ground, the Earth beneath us. Um, like I say every time I bring this up, make this a part of your life by not eating animals. Change your habits a little bit at a time, a lot at a time all of a sudden so that we can all move a little bit at a time. But yeah, that's continuing. Um, that's the other transit that I think is still going to be pivotal um, for this year, given it's square to Saturn and Jupiter, but mostly Saturn in Aquarius, big time emphasis on revolutionizing our relationship to the world. Um, Neptune is still in Pisces and Pluto is still in Capricorn, but like they're just kind of hanging out there. They're not really that important for this year's transits in particular. Neptune will be square the nodes uh, as I will get into, but um, actually, yeah, we can transition into that now because the eclipses for this year are in Gemini and Sagittarius, but the nodes in Gemini and Sag are the north node of increase and the south node of decrease in an axis around the communication and transmission of ideas. The north node massive increase is in the sign of Gemini, which is short-term information, which is um, fun fact ideas, which is the bubbling up of spring into summer, so the heating of ideas. Increase in data and facts, uh, lessening in attention span. We can see this already, you know, TikTok blows up, um, no one goes to movie theaters anymore, like now it's all short form, it's all bursts of information. I've learned more probably in the past year, um, both in my education at school and the amount I'm taking and, and online and learning through modes of interaction that I have in my entire life combined, like things are picking up. I'm speaking really fast, I'm sorry. South Node is in Sag, the decrease of overarching philosophy, the decrease in letting go of overwhelming perspective. We're now seeing how a cohesive, like unified theory often lacks nuance, or we have to let go of these blanket statements about reality, and we have to investigate our short-term data because it's easy to fall into a conspiracy theory or a philosophy that encompasses so much that it's more false than it is true just due to the fact that it's not nuanced enough. That's a good word is that Gemini, even though it's an air sign, can be more nuanced than Sag in terms of the nodes because Gemini fractalizes, Sagittarius unifies, and so we're seeing how we need to break things down right now. I have a full video on what the nodes mean, which I will also link down below in case you want to educate yourself about the nodes and their meanings for, for this year. So with the nodes in Gemini and Sag, they will be square to, or Neptune will be square the nodes. The nodes cannot be square anything, but planets can be square them because planets send out aspects. And having Neptune at the bending of the nodes or square the nodes in a, in a T-square, Neptune is at the, the, mid, the midpoint, indicates that Neptune is a sort of missing piece or buried, buried aspect that we need to integrate to make better use of the extreme energy of the nodes nodes. And Neptune and Pisces as really overwhelming delusion and dreams and romanticizing the spiritual journey, I think we need to be careful of spiritualizing falsehood, of um, romanticizing conspiracy. We also need to be aware of the possibility of burnout and overwhelming fatigue when we take in too much information. So energy regulation and honesty about why we want information will be really important in the year to come. That not information, not all information is created equal. Um, we might even know that we're the ones stir stirring the pot and adding to the false news. Be really careful about disinformation, square one. There are three eclipses this year. So June 10th, solar eclipse in Gemini. Um, this solar eclipse will be both the sun and the moon in Gemini. So yeah, if you have Gemini placements, so solar eclipses are breakdowns of authority. So solar eclipse in Gemini will be a new beginning because solar eclipses are always new moons on steroids, basically. I explained in my nodes videos. But in Gemini, it'll be the... the 
a new standard that involves breaking down an information authority. I think we might like get like a news source breaking down or someone, just the way that we get news is breaking down. Maybe statistically speaking, we now get news like more from social media than we do from traditional news outlets and that's like the new normal. Um, November 19th, so all the way into the next half of the year, we have a partial lunar eclipse in Taurus. So the nodes will be close enough to the boundary between Taurus and Gemini that the, um, the, the moon will be in Taurus during Scorpio season. The moon will be in Taurus, the sun will be in Scorpio, and that will be within range of the nodes, even though the nodes are in Gemini. So it's out of sign. But partial lunar eclipse in Taurus, November 19th, that will be a full moon on steroids. So big beginning, uh, or big ending, I'm sorry. That might have something to do really with uh, relationship to Earth with environmentalism end of the year. December 4th, there is a total solar eclipse in Sagittarius. Really looking at this, total solar eclipse in Sag, a new beginning on the south node in Sagittarius. Interesting what that's going to hold in with in terms of a new... I honestly want to think even maybe like a new colonialist agenda, a new way of releasing our hold on certain other lands. I'm just thinking in terms of Sagittarius and the proselytization or the colonialism that can be implied with that sign, that a new beginning that involves the south node of decrease has me thinking. A new beginning of decrease. Maybe there's a sudden event where we are definitely not the leading world power anymore around December into the beginning of next year. So as you can see, the challenges and the transits in general are much more spread out. We are done with the cardinal only shit show of 2017 to 2020 basically. We are moving into, yes, an age of air sign emphasis, but not one that is but like a, a battlefield of air signs. It's just an emphasis. And so, like I've said before, I think that we are now moving into more intelligent conflict. We are moving into more light conflict. And for this year, it's moving from Capricorns going through it to Aquarians both going through it and stepping up and growing. So, yeah, the activated sign for this year is, is Aquarius pretty clearly with Jupiter and Saturn there and uh, that being the emphasis. But it's not the same as Capricorns, like literally dying through the past few years. It's going to be more spotlight is on you to both grow up and uh, grow into yourselves. So if you have any thoughts coming up around the upcoming year, let me know down below. I would love to hear from you around how this is manifesting in your chart. Um, do let me know. And now let's, um, let's pull a tarot card for the whole year ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So we have the Four of Cups, and this is interesting because it's called the Lord of Luxury or the Lord of Satiety. It has an overflowing cup. There's a fourth cup here that's overflowing, indicating that we have more than enough and we are not interested in being offered more. So this could be indicative of how this year we are overwhelmed. There's a huge emphasis of ideas coming in and we're simplifying and niching down. I know that if you're in like the online world, you know that you have to niche down because it, if you're appealing to everyone, you're appealing to no one. And maybe that involves what we're doing with our life, that if you're trying to please everyone, there is no way to do that in the polarized world. That literally we're like splitting off on fucking timelines and shit basically. We are. The emphasis is now on you and deciding what you want to hold on to because more is not always more, um, unless it's money. <laughs> the cap rising comes through. Okay, let's pull out a work your light oracle deck card to see um, what the oracle card for the year is going to be. Deep replenishment, retreat, rest, be held. Oh my gosh, that resonates. Replenishment rest for this year. I mean, sure, we might be moving into an age of the mind more than the body, generally speaking, but that does not mean that you can skip out on rest. And that rest and recuperation might be more meditation now. It might be taking care of your home space better if you're working from home. I love that this came up because I know for me that my fucking lifestyle of 2020 is unsustainable. I'm dying. I'm exhausted. I need to change for 2021. I need to narrow down, not take on more, and simplify, rest, replenish. So with that being said, so happy to communicate this message and relay what the astrology is saying for the year ahead. Let me know if you think anything or don't. L l let me know. Um, as always, like, subscribe, do all the things if you have not already. I love hearing from you guys. Let me know your thoughts. Sending love. We'll see you in the next one. There is one.